So we all understand three to the third is three times three times three. Uh, if we want to break this down, that's nine. Three times three is nine. And times three would be 27. Okay. All right, so we're good there. Um, let's see. This is, this is very important, that, that we can break down exponents into it's this many of that thing. Okay, so let's, let's talk about the thing and the thing. This thing, maybe I'll, I'll just point to them with a different color. This guy right here, is what you call the base, and that would be called, well, let's call it the power. It's got, it got lots of names, but we can call it the power. So we got the base and the power. So the base is multiplied by itself this many times. Okay? So now let's look at, do we understand the properties of exponents? Let's hold first that uh, multiply a couple of things together, like uh, 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 6th. You just tell me that's 4 to the what? Okay, don't tell me. I mean, write it down, and I'll come and see how it goes. <laughs> All right, so uh, it is 4 to the ninth. Right. And if in the end you remember this, um, when you multiply um, uh, terms with the same base, add exponents, which may be what some of you are remembering. All right, that works fine. But as soon as you, as soon as that knowledge gets a little bit old, and you kind of forget, uh, then well, then you've forgotten, right? If you forget, then you've forgotten. If you're supposed to add them, or are you supposed to multiply them? I can't quite remember what I'm supposed to do. And it's not about what you're supposed to do. It's about what is it? I mean, what is the truth? All right. So let's look at that real quick. What would the exponent be? Well, this means how many fours will I multiply together, right? That's what the exponents do. They multiply the bases by themselves this many times. Okay, so let's figure that out, because maybe we've kind of forgotten. And if you've forgotten, you should really pay attention, uh, because this will be really useful when you're kind of wondering, what am I supposed to do? Well, just go back to what, you know, the basics, and just re-figure it out, all right? So this four to the third, what does that mean? What is it telling you to do? Okay. Four times four times four. Four times four times four. Four times four times four. And what does four to the sixth mean? Yes, okay, four times four times four. Four times four times four times four again. Okay, six of those. All right, so this is what four to the third is, and this is what four to the sixth is. Here's four to the third, here's four to the sixth. What are we doing with four to the third and four to the sixth? What are they doing? They're multiplying together. So when I take 4 to the 3rd multiply by 4 to the 6th, I see I just had a bunch of fours multiplied together. Right? And this is why exponential notation was invented, because who wants to write this every time they want to write, multiply four nine, or nine fours together? Okay. So if I want to express this in exponential notation, I'm just saying that I want to take 4 and multiply by itself how many times? Nine, nine times, three times, plus six times, nine times. So, uh, yeah, the purpose of, of this page right now is to reinforce this property slash rule slash uh, guideline slash I don't know what you want to call it, okay? But this thing that people typically memorize but don't really spend the time uh, understanding why it works, all right? Um, Let's do um, four to the third times three to the sixth. How would you put those together? Well, here's another question. I'm gonna try to trick you. Who thinks about my suspicious behavior?
So can someone prove that I'm trying to trick you? Or in other words, you can't put these together in any way. Stay the same. They would just stay the way. The only thing you could do really is like figure out four to the third is sixty-four. <laughs> figure out what three to the sixth is. I have no idea. Some huge number. Okay. And then multiply those numbers together. Sure. But as far as exponential notation goes, there's no way to put these together. You just they just stay. Stay. Right. And to see why, you got four times four times four times three times three times. Three times Three times three. So there's no way to put these together with a single exponent because we're not multiplying nine of anything together. We're not multiplying nine fours, we're not multiplying nine nine threes, we're not multiplying nine of any one thing. Okay? So. Okay. So if we want to be good with the uh, with uh, polynomials. We've got to extend this to variables, x's and y's and z's and stuff. Okay? So x's to powers and y's to powers and z's to powers. Alright? So what does x to the third mean? What is the meaning of x to the third? X times x times x. X times x, times x. And now we can put any number that we want in for x, and it just means that we're going to multiply that number by itself three times. We can put uh, four in there, we could put three in there for x, and it would just mean that we take that number and multiply it by itself three times. So if I take x to the third times x to the eighth, don't, don't say it out loud, don't give it away, work on it yourself. Okay, flawless all the way around, everybody got the right answer. Is that the most important thing? Do my eyes look like this? Of course. No. It's just no. Is that, right? Is that all that matters? See these eyes? No. It means no, it's not the most important thing. What's the most important thing? Yes, there would be no why. Okay. I guess it's really an opinion thing. To me, it's the most important reason. I understand that not everybody cares why. Okay. But if you understand why, uh, it's just better. And it's easier. Okay. When when you are questioning yourself, wondering, should this be x to the 11th or x to the 24th? Because I kind of forget the rule. Okay. Then we go back to basics. We remember what x to the 3rd means, what x to the 8th means. Believe it or not, from time to time, when I've got my mind out of the things and I, and I come upon something like this, I will not uh, incredibly rarely, it comes up from time to time, where I Forget. Okay? I'm not good at math because I'm a great rememberer. I'm a terrible rememberer. But I know what this means, and I know what this means. And if I want to write this as x to the something, well, I know that this something means how many x's I'm multiplying together. So I just remind myself really quickly that, oh, yes, there's three of those and eight of those. So I would multiply three of them times eight of them. That's eight, right? It's like an x now. Altogether, we have 11, not 24. There's not 24 x's that we're multiplying together, right? There's 11 of them that we're multiplying together. Okay. Who's bored? Okay. Are you bored because you already know this? Yes. Are you bored because you already understand why? Yeah. Okay. Um, good. Now let's look at um, x to the third plus x to the eighth. Yeah, there, answer that question. Okay. <laughs> so I've gone around and I've said, no, x to the 11th is wrong, and then I hear, oh, it's x to the 24th. Why? Probably because you're just guessing. <laughs> it should be something else. Okay, remember, exponential notation means what? You subtract it. So you're just throwing stuff out there, and it doesn't stick. So think about what this stuff means, and if you can even put them together. Just because I asked, I didn't even say put them together. I said just do that, answer that question. Okay, you know what the answer is? As far as exponential notation goes, that's it. There's no putting these together. If we are investigating, or, or we truly understand why this is true, then, then we can make a little more sense of why nothing happens here. 
Right? You can't just put these together and say it's always x to the uh, 11th or 24th or the 5th or what other guess you might make. Okay? And that's one of the hardest things to do is say, you're telling me to put these together and I'm just going to say you can't? That's a hard answer to give. Okay? You want there to be something that you do because you're used to doing things. And if you haven't done anything, you can't be done. Okay? But sometimes there's just nothing to do. Um, if x to the third plus x to the eighth were x to the eleventh, look at what you're saying. You're saying that taking this number times that number, the exact same answer as taking that number plus that number. There's just one possible, there's like two. There's, there's two possible real examples of that happening. That would be two plus two is four, and two times two is four, and zero. Zero plus zero is zero, and zero times zero is zero. But no other numbers would, would ever work. If we do 3 times 4, that's 12. 3 plus 4, that's 7. And I'm going to get the same answer by multiplying and by adding. Okay, This can't be true. Let's look at it. Let's break it out into its longer form and see why that can't be true. x times x times x. x times x times x. x times x. x times x. 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, if we multiply these together, that would be x to the 11th, because we'd have 11 x's to multiply together. Are we multiplying them together? No, we are adding them together. So we do have 11 x's, but we're not multiplying them together, which means exponential notation would be useless to express this thing, okay? So, it's just, it just stays the way it is. If there, we could rewrite them, like we could rewrite this in, in maybe a couple different ways, but we wouldn't be combining anything. We wouldn't be using properties of exponents to put them together into one expression. Okay? So be careful about that. Think about what it means to say what you're saying. If you say this is x to the 11, think about what that means. Okay? It means crazy stuff. But that just doesn't make any sense. Okay? So when you multiply things, you add their exponents. When you add them and they have different exponents, there's just nothing to do. How about? to trick many, many of you into thinking that, oh, because they're the same, I can just take them and put them together. No. No. It's the same mistake as saying x to the third plus x to the eighth is x to the eleventh. Okay? If I write this x times x times x and x times x times x, when I add them together, the only thing that would be x to the sixth is if I multiplied these three, these three times these three. That would be six x's multiplied together. But I'm not doing that, I'm adding them. So there is no exponent, new exponent to write. Okay? Plus three. Yeah, x to the third plus x to the third. But here's the thing, here's the little uh, trick. Can we write it with a new exponent? No. All right? No, there's no new exponent to write. But these are two identical things. How many, like what am I talking about? What two identical things do we have? What thing do we have duplicated? Okay, the exponent's the same. X times x times x is duplicated, right? So how many x times x times x's do we have? Two. Two, we have two of these. Two times that. When you add something to itself, that's a, you know, we're just talking about different notations. We got uh, multiplication notation, we got exponent notation, we got all these exponent, uh, these notations. This notation means rather than write something added to itself a bunch of times, you say okay, multiply. That's what multiplication is. It's just repeated addition. Here's one, here's another one, and what if I added another one? How many would I have? Three of those things. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I think that on average. 
average, we're all at about a, I think we're pretty even, as far as like all the stuff that we put up on the board so far. Okay, so I'm just going to write up a bunch of expressions that all you, the user properties that we've talked about, you put together things that you can put together, write new exponents when it's possible, and don't when it's not. If there's nothing you can do, just leave it. All right? So let's go with. All right, so this is uh, one of the first kinds of uh, expressions that we talked about putting together. You've got uh, an exponent, which is just like instructions for multiplying something several times. Okay, so here, it's saying to multiply x three times, it's saying to multiply x five times, and we're multiplying all those multiplications together. So it's just one long string of multiplication. So we can just put that all together into like one base to one exponent, x to the eighth. This means multiply eight x's together, and so does this, because we're going to multiply five of them together and three of them together, and then multiply those three and those five together for a total of eight getting multiplied together. Right here, you can't add x to the third and x squared. They're completely different things. Okay, x to the third, x squared, we can't write that as x to the fifth because we're not multiplying them together, we're adding them together. Okay. And those, those two things just don't really go together. You, do, you don't put multiplication and addition together in that way. There's not really a notation that means that. You, can't, you just can't clear it up any better than x to the third plus x squared. It's just done. Okay. But x to the third plus x to the third is two times x to the third. Just like five plus five is two times five. And it's just shortened up notation for five plus five. Five plus five plus five is three times five. That's exactly what three times five means. It's the definition of three times five. It's why we invented three times five, because we don't want to write five plus five plus five. It takes longer. Okay, so we invented this multiplication notation where we just say, how many fives are we going to add together? Three of them. Right? And this means, how many fives are we going to multiply together? We're going to multiply three of them together. Okay. It's just notation for to shorten up things that would take a lot more space to write down otherwise. Right? So we have an x to the third plus x to the third. That's two times x to the third. Just means add x to the third uh, to itself. And then we add x squared because there's just no way to put it together. We can't add it together. Like with multiplication, we can't write it with a new exponent. Just doesn't the two worlds don't uh, meet up. Right? You've got x to the fifth plus three x to the fifth. Well, three x to the fifth just means x to the fifth plus x to the fifth plus x to the fifth. And if we add another x to the fifth, you got four x to the fifth. Four times x to the fifth. Four of them added together. Four add four x to the fifths together. That's what that means. So that one's going to by four. Plus x to the tenth. I was trying to get you to like. You get your brain to, to, to short out and say, well, 5 and 10, well, 10 is, is 2 times 5, so maybe there's something I can do there. But no. x to the 10th is 10 x's multiplied together. x to the 5th is 5 x's multiplied together. And we are adding them together. Okay. So, yeah, there's no putting that together. It's just 4 x to the 5th plus x to the 10th. Okay. Let's say we don't know anything about negative exponents, but now we have well established the rule that if you multiply two things that have the same base, like this has a base of x and this has a base of x, they both have exponents, we add their exponents together. So 5 plus negative 2 will give us 3. 
get into more of what negative exponents mean uh, fairly soon. <coughs> Um, let's see. That's not what I wanted. Uh, three x to the fourth times um, four x to the uh, sixth. All right. Uh, so I didn't get around to. Shh, didn't get around to as many people from their phones as I wanted to for your phone. What? I know. If I haven't talked to you in like 15 seconds, I can get out your phones <laughs> and look on Facebook or something. Fair, fair enough. All right, so what we have here, pay attention to that, three times x, times x, times x, times x, times four, times x, times x, times the six x's. Notice. It's all multiplication, all the way across the board, right? No addition, no subtraction, no division. Three times x times x times x times x times four times x times x times x. I got that's not too good. Can we put that together somehow in a more clean looking way? What do you think? Same thing? No. What do you think? Twelve x to the tenth. We got a twelve x to the tenth and a seven x to the tenth on the board. Who votes for 7x to the 10th? No, it's not just one. Yeah. OK, who votes for 12x to the 10th? That's all right. All right, now let's look at why. Maybe you want to take 7 because you think, oh, there's this adding thing when I multiply. Okay. But that adding rule is only for the exponents, which means how many times I multiply something together. So that's why I want you to get out of the habit of memorizing. OK, so then now I'm supposed to add. Just go back to basics. What is? 3 times x to the 4th times 4 times x to the 6th. It means this. If you saw this, would you take this 3 and add it to this 4? You have a string of multiplication. Like there's, there's no addition involved. Uh, at least the way that we're looking at it right here. So we got 3 times 4 times. We have 3 times 4 is 12. And x to the, well, we count them all up, and we got 10 x's to multiply together, right? Not, no addition, not adding anything together. We are multiplying 10 x's together, we're multiplying 3 times 4. Now, this is not to say you should memorize the rule when you're multiplying everything together, you can multiply the numbers and then you can add the exponents. It's not about memorizing the rules. That's what gets you into trouble, that's what gets you confused. And memorizing a bunch of rules that you can't keep straight. Speak from experience myself and from teaching, that's what gets you into trouble. When we think about it, all that's happening here is, it, is multiplication all the way across the board. And so I can rearrange this however I want. I can write this as 3 times 4 times x to the fourth times x to the sixth. 3 times 4 is 12. x to the fourth times x to the sixth, that just means 10 x is multiplied together. That's x to the tenth. 12 x to the tenth. See what you can put together and what you cannot put together. So it gets a little challenging. It gets even more challenging if you say to yourself, ah, it doesn't matter if I really understand why this stuff works. I can just kind of fumble around and, and guess and hope, and, and that should be good. Okay. Or I can just memorize a bunch of rules. Right? Um, and I don't know, maybe you're a really good memorizer, but if you're anything like me, if you're the average person, you're not going to be able to memorize everything. All right. So, let's take a step back. And, and one thing that, that may be helpful is to remember that like these act 
like numbers, like this seven times x squared, since it's, it's all like seven times x times x, it's just one number. The result of that will be a number. Uh, and this acts like a number, this acts like a number, and if we think of this as plus and negative x squared, like that negative x squared, that acts like a number. Each of these things are like a number. And when we see them that way, we can apply the order of operations. If I had this string of numbers, would I add these first? Would I multiply these first? Would I add these first? What do we do first? What, and it's not because it's right or wrong, it's just what we agreed to do as a, as a world, as a planet of, of math doers. What do we do first? What do we agree to do first when it comes between multiplication and addition? Pen dots. Pen dots, okay, pen dots. Which for the record I hate, Why? but I already played you the video a few months ago. Okay, so this is, what's this, what's this stand for? Multiplication, what's this stand for? Which comes first? Multiplication. Okay, it's higher in the order, the order of operations. Uh, so would we add these together, or try to, or would we multiply these together? Or would we add these together? We would multiply. Still we would multiply before we add. We would multiply and divide from left to right before we add or subtract. So let's see, can we multiply these together? Is that possible? Yes. What do you say it is? Um, a 4x to the third and a 2x to the fifth. Mm -hmm. Multiply these together to do what? x to the eighth sounds sounds good. Multiply a couple of numbers together, add the exponents. Okay. Well, if I'm trying to uh, defend Sarah in a court of law, and, and and her whole guilt and innocence rests on my ability to prove that she's right about this, then I need to go back to basics and say. and say that, well, look, uh, judge, all this means is four times x times x times x, uh, and, and then this means two times x times x times x times x times x, multiplying all those five x's together. And look, there we have multiplication. So we're just multiplying a bunch of things together, and when we multiply, we can multiply in any order that we want. Okay. So I'm going to take this 4 and 2 and multiply them together and get 8. Just like I could if, if these were any numbers, I can take any of the two numbers and multiply them together at any point that I want. I can reorder the multiplication any way I want. And then I'm going to multiply the x to the third times x to the fifth. Well, if I were to write that all out, I would just have x times x times x times x times x times x. How many times? How many times if I were to just multiply these times these? Eight, eight of them. Can I write x to the 8th? Is that, is that what's happening here? What does this mean? Eight, x times itself 8 times. Is that what this is doing? Is that what's happening up here? Yes. Mm -hmm. x is being multiplied by itself 8 times. Case closed. Sarah goes free. So I'm able to prove what she said was correct. Okay. So now let's write down the rest of the stuff. We combine these two by multiplication. Let's see. we got 7x squared. Uh, plus the result of that multiplication, uh, minus x squared, or plus negative x squared. Let's see, um, can I add these together? I cannot. For, for a, a short explanation would be, uh, you know, like to use math key terms, they are not like terms. These are not like terms. Like terms would be an x squared and an x squared. Yes, they are like terms. You can add a like, like term. Or an x to the 8 and an x to the 8. Yes, those are like terms. I can add those together, I can subtract those, but I don't have that. Those are not like terms. Can I combine them? No. Okay. Because, in short, I'm not adding x squared and x squared and x squared and x squared and x squared, so I can't shorten that up with multiplication. No, that's not possible. Uh, okay, over here, no. Can't combine those. Those aren't like terms. So is there anything else we can do? Danielle? Here's the x squared term. Here's an x squared term. Right. So yes, I could, I could combine those together because those are the same thing. Got it? 
x squared plus an x squared. I'm going to write seven of these. x squared plus x squared plus x squared plus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven x squared. That's what, that, that's what seven x squared means. It means I'm adding x squared to itself seven times. But then I'm going to minus x squared, which is kind of hard to, to, to like represent, but I guess we just write minus x squared. Because the thing about addition is I can write it in any order that I want. So I can add this negative x squared here. These two would cancel each other. I'm left with how many six of them added together. How do I write that? Six times x squared. Six times x squared plus eight x to the eighth. Eight times x to the eighth. Can I add these together? Why not? They're not like terms. They're not the same kind of thing. They're completely different things. They're completely different dimensions. They just live in different in planes altogether. This is just ridiculous. <coughs> right, add them together. Okay. <coughs> so in the in the area of, of exponents now, multiplying them, combining them, and adding them, subtracting them, and like terms and not like terms. On a scale of one to five, where do you think you are? On your hands. Have things changed? Can you change your position? Some of you have decided. Combine these things together. Do you understand how exponents work? And I really encourage you to think. Go back to basic. If you're not sure, if you're just kind of guessing and hoping the answer is right and just giving it to me to look at and say, yes, you're right, or yes, you're, or, or no, you're not right, okay? Um, just go back to basics. Think about it. And if you're going to make a guess, make an educated guess. Make a guess that you have a reason for making. All right? Not just because, like, well, I thought maybe because I'm supposed to do this. Because okay. math is not something outside of yourself that, it, that you're told what to do. Uh, you know, do this right now and, and do this next. <coughs> it's a set of rules that if you follow them, it just everything follows and builds on itself naturally. Um, okay. The next thing I want to do, what I want to do is take this, what you're looking at, and then help you figure out how, how this stuff could maybe mean 2x squared plus 3x plus 7. Okay. How this could ever mean this. Right. It's all a really natural uh, system. Like it all works perfectly okay, if we can all just one thing, suspend our disbelief for a little bit, um, and just kind of agree to a few things. All right, so, so to start with, this is, this side of this is one, and this side of this is one. So how big is the area of this thing? Four. That'd be the perimeter. Oh, one, two, two. Two. One, two. One. 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 <laughs> So the area of a rectangle, including a square, square is a rectangle, is, is a length times width, or base times height, or whatever you want to think of it as. Okay? One side times the other. And since the two sides are the same, one times one is just one. Okay? Uh, what would the area of this be? What about the area of all of these? Like, how many of these squares are there? I don't know. I haven't counted them yet. Oh, 8 by 24, is it? Maybe. Is that 20? I think it's 23. Then. Times eight, that's what? 124? 184. 184? Yeah. 184. Okay, 184. Um, all right, so next, what are we doing next? Now let's look at this. 
So here's where we suspend our disbelief a little bit. This length, I, I can't give you stretchy things that can change their size. I can only give you these concrete things that don't change their size. You understand what I'm saying? I can't make x this variable that can change how big it is. Right? Because when we solve algebraic equations, sometimes x comes out to be 2, sometimes it comes out to be 3 halves, sometimes it comes out to be 64. Right? So x is this thing in algebra that changes. It, it can take on any value. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Now this length, we just have to take it to be x. We have to accept that this length can represent 64 just as easily can, as it can represent 2, right? even though it doesn't change size. Can we all do that? I'll just accept that. If I were to take one of these, If I were to take one of these x's, these things I'm calling x's, and, and put them up right here, well, we can see it's one, two, three, four, five, and a little more, it's a little, but we have to forget about that idea. We, we can't measure this x. That's why I didn't make it exactly so many blocks across. Okay? So we can just pretend like it is this mysterious, unknowable value. Or, or at least a, a, a variable that we have to solve for. It could be 64, it could be 2, it could be negative 5. All right? So let's just suspend our disbelief and, and just pretend, use our imaginations to say this could represent any length. Now that we've done that, what's the area of this rectangle? You can see on this side it's x. On this side it is 1. So what's the area? X is uh, not a specific number. X to the first. If we think of it, the area of a rectangle, just like we did here, one times one. This area is 1 times 1. This area is 1 times x. x is the length of the other side. <coughs> 1 times x. So the area of this would be? 1x. Huh? 1x. One one x. Or, or just x, because when you say 1 times something, then that's a little bit uh, you know, extra. We don't need to say 1 times the thing. So, so the area of this would be 1. The area of these would be x. This side would be x, this side would be 1. And this is going to come in real handy down the road. All right, this one, if you were to take one of these and put it up next to this one, you'd find out that they're exactly the same length. But this length is x, and this is x. You can see that here, x by x. 2x. So that would be the area of this? What would be the area of this shape? x times x, right? Length times width, base times height, whatever x times x, just like this is 1 times 1, this is 1 times x. We found the area of this whole thing to be 184, because we took the base, the, say the base times the height, we found that to be 184. So we take this base times this height, we get x by x. Okay, And the way that we write that in uh, math, the shortest word possible would be x squared. x squared. So all of these, what do these represent? In their area, x squared, yeah? x squared. Okay, so all of these are worth one, the area of them and the sides of them. All of these are an area of x, side of one, side of x. This is a side of x and a side of x for an area of x squared. Right. So if this were x, this area could represent a multiplication of x times x. Right. Let's just take it like before we, we get into what I want you to do. What would x to the third look like? Get yeah, real creative. A triangle. Triangle's a good idea. Like a, a flat triangle. <laughs> okay. What does x to the third mean? That's how we started our day today. X times x times x. So if this represents x times x. Or just take the square and cut it in half. Cut it in half, like that? Yeah. That would represent x times x times x? Maybe. Anybody else have any other ideas of how x times x times x could be represented? x to the third, x cubed, as we say. 2x squared? Huh? 2x squared? 
Two squares? Yeah. Well, two squares. This would be an x squared, and this would be an x squared. Okay. Half of one square would be x times x times x? One and a half. One and a half squares? Yeah. One and a half squares. Um, let's see. Let's see what two squares would be worth. It would be worth two squares. Two x squares. An x squared plus an x squared would be two x squared. Right. This guy plus this guy would be x squared plus another x squared. Not multiplication. Like multiplication is represented by these areas, the length times the width. Addition is just, hey, one plus one is two, one plus one plus one is three, two plus three is five, right? This is addition, you just lay several of them down. So two of these squares right next to each other would be actually x squared plus x squared. So that wasn't a bad idea, like we get an x squared, we gotta like somehow get another x in there, but then we wind up just getting x squared plus x squared or two x squared. How do we get a third? Multiplication by x, right? x times x times x, x cubed, x to the third. Any ideas? How about, um, say I take one of those squares and I have it sitting down, it's like looking at it kind of at an angle, it's like sitting down on the, on the uh, table. Right? And this is x, this side is x, and this side is x. x times x is x squared. I'm going to make a shape that has is, is got another x we multiply by a third x. How about x times x times x? So all three sides are worth x? Right? It's so like x by itself is just this length from here to there is x. x squared Okay, this, this is not the only way to do it, but we can represent this x squared as x times x, right? Area is a nice way to represent multiplication, x times x. And then if we take length, I say, I don't know, length times width times height, right? what do we call that? We got lengths and we got areas, and then when we take it into the third dimension, volume, volume the volume of this cube. That's why we call it x cubed. That's why we call this x squared because we can make a square out of it, x by x, a side of x, another side of x. And this is x cubed. A length of x, a length of x, and another length of x in the third dimension. All right, well, let's go back to this paper. What I want you to do with this, I'm gonna, well, I meant to double check the picture I have. Cut these up. Just pass those along and I'll try to find more scissors.